I'm waiting for the day somebody wants to debate me live. And I'm, let me rephrase that because their folks are going to be like, you're being prideful. I hate talking to Christians sometimes because the moment you say, I, brother, you're being prideful. Okay. I look forward to, let me spiritualize this. I look forward to the day that I could have a friendly debate on can a Christian have a demon? Because I am thoroughly doctrinally prepared to have that conversation. That's you on tape. <laughs> Come on, please. Come on. You sure about that, Pagani? <laughs> Welcome everybody to the BCV channel. I am your host, Pastor Seiko Woods. Please do the following before we get started. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell at the bottom of this video. And whenever I go live, post any content, you'll be one of the first to view it. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry financially, first of all, thank you so much for your support. Those of you who have been continued supporters of our channel, uh, the BCV channel and Love, Life and Marriage with the Woods. Thank you so much for your tangible, tangible gifts of love and tokens of appreciation. We really do appreciate that. Also, but if you would also like to be a uh, body lifer, that's right, a body lifer, you can also do so by just clicking the donation links be below at the bottom and you can give as the Lord leads whenever you uh, desire to do so, whether monthly, uh, semi-monthly, weekly, daily, it doesn't matter. Whatever you desire to give, we would definitely appreciate that. It helps us to keep our channel going and the content produced and also to, to cover the cost of production and things of that nature. So definitely appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Also BCV information, BCV merchandise. You can also click the link below and uh, purchase uh, merchandise there as well too. So let's get into this video. Um, as you heard at the beginning of this video, Mr. Alexander Pagani, that clip was dated in 2020. So three years later, maybe some things may have changed, but hey, uh, I was hoping and praying and believing that the opportunity to have a conversation and dialogue with uh, Mr. Pagani regarding the subject of whether or not Christians can be demon possessed or in his term, he says demonized. Well, there is no difference between demon possession and demonization. In fact, let me just go right ahead and just pull up the definition because words matter and definitions matter too. The definition for demonize means, number one, to turn into as or as if into a demon. Number one, to turn into or as if into a demon. Number two, to possess by or as if by a demon. Three, to represent as evil or diabolic. So I believe as Christians, Christians cannot be demon possessed. We cannot be demonized. We can be oppressed. That means the enemy, his imps can mess with us. That's different. But demon possession? No, the Bible does not teach that. The Bible does not affirm such such teaching or doctrine. But um, that is what Mr. Pagani uh, stated. He wanted to make sure that I represented him accurately if I were to do a video um, in response to his statement. I welcome him to come on. And for us to have a dialogue, and I still do that now. And I know you're going to watch this video because I told you also, uh, Mr. Bagani, that I was going to make a response and I would definitely tag you once this video has been uh, produced and uploaded and presented on my channel. But that is the question. Can a Christian be demon-possessed or demonized? Emphatically, no. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. First uh, John 4, 4, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. So we have the Spirit of God residing in us, never leaving us, never departing from us. We are under the new covenant. We're not under the old covenant where we have to worry about the Spirit leaving as David did in Psalm 51. So we have the indwelling presence and indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, whereby we are able to do what the Lord commands us to do and only by his spirit. But again, I believe we should be able to have conversations like this uh, with those who we may differ and disagree with, because I believe it helps the body of Christ grow. I believe it helps the body of Christ see how people can have differing opinions, but be respectful in our dialogue. And even as I am uh, doing this video, I was supposed to have been 
on Jesse Lee Peterson's uh, channel on tomorrow to discuss and have dialogue and maybe even a little bit of a debate regarding his views or questions that he may ask me. But that that interview has been canceled. Um, hopefully it will be uh, continued at a later date as they as they promised. But we'll we'll see. And I'll keep you posted with that. But anyway, if you're just joining this video, and just tune in. Um, Mr. Pagani had made a statement regarding that he would love to have a live debate regarding can Christians be uh, demon possessed or not. And so if you didn't hear that, let's play it again for those who may just join this. Program. I'm waiting for the day somebody wants to debate me live. And I'm, let me rephrase that because their folks are going to be like, you're being prideful. I hate talking to Christians sometimes because the moment you say, I, brother, you're being prideful. Okay. I look forward to, let me spiritualize this. I look forward to the day that I could have a friendly debate on can a Christian have a demon? Because I am thoroughly doctrinally prepared to have that conversation. That's you. I'm thoroughly doctrinally prepared to have the conversation. I am thoroughly doctrinally prepared to have a conversation with him. And among other topics that I believe uh, we should be able to have. But that was not all that you said, uh, Alex. You did say something else later in the video. I really wish that I could find that video. And if you have that video, uh, Alex, I would love to uh, secure a copy of it. I, I I was able to secure the audio portion of it, but for some reason I didn't find it on your channel anymore. I'm not sure if you took it down as you had supposedly recanted uh, your statement and your position, but for the sake of uh, clarity and understanding, because I don't want anybody to think that I'm twisting your words or taking anything that you've said out of context. That's why I'm playing the, the audio portion of what you said, making sure that people know it is exactly you. Um, so pardon the, 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 the mild distortion or the low uh, quality of this particular audio, uh, but I was not able to, uh, transfer it over to a video file, uh, for some, some unknown reason. But that was not the only thing that you said though, Alex, in this, in this so-called, you know, challenge, but you have actually, you actually made an appeal, which I do agree with. And I do affirm with you 100%. More conversations like this need to be had on large platforms. Not just with uh, markets, but with other ideologies within the kingdom uh, that are being perpetuated. And one is deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there, man. Listen, a conversation like this needs to be had about can a Christian have a demon and generational curse, you know? So, yeah. All right, so, um, number one, the highlight of tonight is this. Applause uh, for both parties having this tough conversation. Um, on a public platform for thousands of people uh, to provide commentary, to dialogue, and to have a true biblical Mars Hill moment. Like in the book of Acts chapter 17, we, we need more Mars Hill uh, moments without worrying about um, people's subscribers. What's holding people back from having conversations like this, everyone, is subscribers. Which means the one who has a lot of subscribers will probably never have a conversation to the one who has less subscribers. Because the, the, the one with the largest subscriber is always thinking about, I don't want to promote this other guy with my followers. And I think we need to get delivered from that. I think I genuinely believe we need to get delivered from that. You know, uh, more dialogue uh, should be had. And I think we need to break away from some of these social media um, principles of dialogue, which means if, if the person that has a million viewers, uh, I'm not going to have a conversation with the one that has 50,000 viewers. I'm not going to I'm not going to give him or her uh, a platform on my platform. You know, we need to get delivered from that. You know, we need to get delivered from that because the Bible says that him that he that thinks the Almighty um, have no problem to talk with the person of low degree. Scripture actually, actually, uh, the scriptures uh, actually, uh, actually say this. You know what I'm saying? They actually, they actually, they actually say this. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, um, you know, and I think we need to have uh, this conversation you know, uh, a little bit more 
Um, so that way we can have more Mars Hill moments. And and listen, Pagani, I agree with you 100%. Your, your sentiments are the same as mine, and, and your reference actually to Romans chapter 12, verse 16, which I will just put on the screen, is spot on. It says clearly, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. The King James says, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. In other words, don't be arrogant. Don't be don't because you get more, more subscribers and more followers and, you know, and whatnot. That, that makes you better than someone else. He says, mind not high things, but condescend. Come down. But condescend to men of low estate. Do not be wise in your own conceits. Don't don't puff up yourself. Don't believe your own press. Uh, we can say Paul is, is trying to say so. So, bruh, I agree with you 100 percent. I agree with you 100 percent. My question is, is, is why wouldn't you want to have a conversation and a dialogue with a, with a person like myself? Why, why would you not want to have, you know, discussions like this? I think it is. I think it would be helpful. I think it'd be more than helpful. I think it'd be beneficial to the body of Christ to have dialogue and have conversation. And really, what prompted me to make this video was me watching you on Jesse Lee Peterson's channel. Uh, I think maybe two weeks ago, from from the time of this this production of this video, you you were on Jesse Lee Peterson's uh, channel. And he was asking you questions, and 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 I mentioned to you in the in the comments on my channel, one of the things that grieved me was your lack of response to clear softball alley oop questions. The question that he that he asked you that really got my goat was, which is worse, the civil rights movement or abortion? Which is worse? Uh, I think he I think he said Black Lives Matter or abortion but but nonetheless he 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 added abortion to those last two questions near the end of your interview with him and you said no comment but ironically you he asked you is abortion uh murder and you said yes yeah. so is abortion wrong and you said yes so for you to refuse to answer the the other two questions it it really it really bothered me it really bothered me and it really uh, made me look at you uh, rather suspectingly, if I can use that term. And this is not a diss, but I'm just being real with you, like I told you in the comments. And so what, what I said to you was this in the comments right here. I said, I'm going to keep it 100 with you, bro. There were some things that you said in the interview with Jesse Lee Peterson that greatly concerned, grieved, and angered me. That I believe instead of cowering under pressure... You should have courageously and clearly communicated a Christian position regarding the murder of the unborn versus not giving a comment, which is in, which in fact is to give a comment. Some of the things you said and answered, I agreed with. But for the most part, it seemed to me that your being on Jesse Lee Peterson's podcast wasn't about representing and promoting God's kingdom, but promoting yourself. However, to be fair, I did a reaction video comparing your definition of regeneration versus Corey Miner's definition of regeneration, and I must admit, I was shocked. Your response to Jesse Lee Peterson was 100, was 100 spot on. Therefore, I have to give you a propers on that one. Salute. I publicly explained why I agreed with your position and publicly disagreed with Corey's position live yesterday at the time of that video, live yesterday on my channel, and presented exegetical evidence in doing so. I'm not one to play favorites in the kingdom. I want to call balls, balls, and strikes, strikes, regardless who's up to bat. Nothing more, nothing less. Hopefully, you'll hear the spirit and intent behind my words and be willing to have a dialogue. That's what I had meant and, and, and sent, sent to you, uh, Alex, uh, that day uh, in response to, I believe, it was, um, how should you marry an older woman? And that was one of the questions that Jesse Lee Peterson had asked about how old is your wife, and of course his view on, on marriage and marrying older women is is up in the air. But anyway, and so later that day, I believe, or that evening, you responded and said, "Thanks for the agreement with me on the salvation through re regeneration." I didn't know you did that. That was my honest answer when asked about how to get saved. 
I'm a genuine brother in the faith, delivered unto the saints, and, 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 and adhere to fundamental doctrine outlined in scriptures. We might differ on the topic of deliverance, but I didn't know such secondary topics placed me in the heretic or the heretic category, maybe in the error category, but I'm definitely not a heretic. Well, again, that's that's that will be up for debate and dialogue, because I believe the people that you run with, the people that make false prophecy that you call brothers like Isaiah Saldivar and, 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 and others. You call these people brothers. I think you even may even call Marcus Rogers a brother, but but. But for, for a fact, you call Isaiah Saldivar uh, a, a brother and you defend Isaiah Saldivar and you've banned or blocked, excuse me, you've blocked Corey Minor because you said that you don't like people to attack your friends. Well, I understand that. And you know what? I, I appreciate you are you, you're that type of you know, type of loyal cat that would defend your your friends. Um, that's that's to be commended. That, that is to be commended. However, uh, we don't we don't affirm or stand with things that the Bible doesn't teach. When a person gives a quote unquote prophecy and it doesn't come to pass, God says that they are a false prophet. No different than Marcus Rogers giving a false prophecy, even if I were to give one. If it doesn't come to pass and it's not true, God says I'm a false prophet. There's no true prophets in Scripture that gives false prophecies, and yet they're still prophets of God. But that's your position. And I don't really follow your ministry too much. I only, I've only known about your ministry through Corey Miners. However, um, what the things that you believe when it comes to uh, Christians being demonized, and, and I'll just ask this question to you, uh, Alex, because you said you don't want to come on, and I, I'll read the statement for those for others to review it and, and, and see it as well. But you, you believe in deliverance ministries. What would a Christian need to be delivered from, and why would God need you or me to deliver someone or to lay hands on someone to deliver? I mean, if, if, if I'm a Christian, then it would presuppose that the Holy Spirit of God is in me. Therefore, where do we find in the New Testament, the early church, where Christians are being delivered from demonization, really demon possession uh alex because again demonization means demon possession that's why i put the, the definition on the screen but for your for your definition for your understanding to make sure i'm not misrepresenting you why would a christian need to be delivered delivered from what and by whom what do we find that in scripture so yes we would have a difference of view on that but this but the bottom line is where in the scriptures do we find the basis and the authority by which we are to derive our doctrine and to apply it in our lives and encourage others in the body of Christ to apply it in their lives as well, too. But let's continue with your statement. You say we might differ on the on the topic of deliverance, but I didn't know such secondary topics placed me in the in the heretic category, maybe in the error category, but I'm definitely not a heretic. But thanks for the public agreement. I truly honor you for that. And you asked me to send the link and I did. He said, as far as the Jesse Lee Peterson interview, I honestly didn't know deeply who he was, with the exception of a few interviews where people walked off the show. I told my staff that I was pre-recording on a certain day. On that day, he and many texted me to be careful because he loves to ask trick questions. Well, I didn't see any of the trick questions being a trick question. It's either yes or no. I mean, you refuse to answer simple questions like abortion, which again, that, that bothered me. And I'm pretty sure it bothered a lot of Christians who know, especially as a black man, and you being a person of color as well, too. Um, I guess what Puerto Rican, I think you said Puerto Rican. I want to mis, mis, you know, misrepresent your ethnicity. Um, but you said that you're Puerto Rican. But if you know anything about abortion, and I'm pretty sure you do, that abortion affects the black community in greater uh, and disproportionate rates than our other uh, ethnic counterparts. 37% of abortions among black people are made in this country. Close to 20 million black babies, Alex, have been murdered. And that's just the ones that we, have, that we are counting on record since 1973. Thank God that Roe v. Wade has been overturned. But nonetheless, people are still murdering their babies. And so for you being a minister, quote unquote, of the gospel, being a representative of, 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 of the gospel, 
a brother in Christ, you would we would I would think being an ambassador, you would represent our king better than you did regarding that subject. And you failed miserably in doing that. But let me continue. You said, truthfully, I thought he invited me to discuss our upcoming movie as he also asked to interview my fellow demon slayers as well. Demon slayers. How do you slay a demon? Alex, I mean, again, show I, I, I'm, I'm looking for in scripture for you to show me in scripture. Where do we find demons being slayed by professing Christians? In fact, what I find in scripture is that we're, we're not to slay them. We are to resist them, resist the devil. The Bible says, James says, and he will flee from you. He didn't say rebuke them. He didn't say bind him. He didn't say cast him. He didn't say any of that. He said, resist the devil and he will flee. And resist simply means in the Greek to stand one's ground, to stand one's position. It doesn't mean you talk to them. It doesn't mean you have any dialogue with them. We don't see that anywhere in scripture. He says, resist the devil, not rebuke. Those are two different words. And the Bible says he will flee from you. So again, I'm, I'm, I really believe if you would, would be willing to have these conversations, as you said in, your, in the audio, that we ought to have these kinds of Mars Hill conversations. How is it that the world can have conversations with us, but we can't converse with each other? Why is it that you, have, you, you, have the, you would rather have echo chamber conversations with people who already agree with you, you know, even with Alan Parr? Alan Parr doesn't want to have a conversation with me. Bruzon doesn't want to have a conversation with me. He had one, but after he got dealt with, in his position, pretty much, I guess I'm marked. And anyone and uh, any others like me who want to have conversations with people like yourself, you guys refuse to do that. But you made a public rebuke, and I totally agree, Alex, that some of you to have these bigger channels, you make me wonder. It's because you 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 are you are being high in your own estimation instead of in, instead of associating with the lowly, instead of associating with those who have less followers less subscribers than yourself is that the reason why i i just i just need to know because it's a question worth answering and i hope you would answer these questions i would prefer us to have a face-to-face -face conversation that the body of christ can see two men who may differ to have a respectful dialogue look bro if you can converse with jesse lee peterson who's not a christian by any stretch of the imagination, and, and I would hope that you would know that because he, he denied core essential Christian doctrines while he had you on his platform. So if you're eager and willing to go to people who are not of the light, but you profess to be of the light, why is it that you don't want to have conversations with people like me? I have yet to see people like you, Ruslan, uh, and others you know, Isaiah Saldivar and, 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 and all these other guys have conversations with people across the aisle. You did a video basically dunking and dissing, quote unquote, reformers and quote unquote, Calvinists. And so this reform, quote unquote, Calvinist would love to have a conversation and dialogue with you, Alex. And we can have it on your channel or mine. We can do it simultaneously. But I believe a conversation is warranted. I believe a conversation and dialogue is necessary. The Bible says that there must be heresies and divisions and factions among you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. That these things must take place. These things must happen so that those who are approved may be made manifest, may be made known among you. Why you guys don't want to have conversations is, be, is beyond me. Other than the fact maybe you're not believing what you've said about your own rebuke. I don't know. But let's continue with your comment. He said, truthfully, I thought he invited me to discuss an upcoming movie as he had also asked to interview my fellow demon slayers as well. But when I saw the interview turned into a different direction in my head, when he asked various questions was entrapment. So all that kept coming to me was answer not a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. I chose to follow that verse and say no comment. Now, the only thing is, though, though. Alex, I, I, I understand what, what, you, what you're saying and the point of what you're saying, but he asked that question more than once. He asked it twice. And, and in, the, in the sense and in the context, when it deals with morality 
in the sense and in the context when it deals with life and death, like babies. Verse 5 of Proverbs 26 says, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. So, so the first stem, answer not a fool. It's actually answer not a fool, lest you be like him. Answer not answer full of courts as folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes, is verse five. But verse four says, Don't answer, don't answer fool, lest you be like a fool. But then there are times when you answer fool like a, a Jesse Lee Peterson, lest he be wise in his own eyes. So when you did not answer that question, you sent a message to the entire world who may have watched that video that Christians don't have a position, professing Christians don't have a position regarding abortion, regarding the murder and massacre of the unborn. That was not the time not to answer. That was the time to answer and answer authoritatively and answer biblically based on the word of God. And you failed to do that. But you continue on and said, it seemed like he was trying to entrap me in my words. Yeah, he probably was. Again, I thought the interview was concerning the movie, not to discuss the faith, doctrine or ministry. As far as our as far as uh, dialogue with you now. Nah, it will be fruitless as my views concerning deliverance will never change as I used to preach against it for many years in my early days straight out of Bible seminary. I eventually embraced it to then reject it again. Makes no sense. I'm ready to stand before God, give an account for the ministry of deliverance, and I will never turn anyone away who genuinely is seeking my help in this regards. I've said this publicly on video for years since I've been in ministry since 1995. May God continue to bless your ministry as you seek to be a good Berean, may your channel continue to be a light and challenge falsehood on these social media streets. On my end, I call you a brother in the faith. I'm okay with you not thinking the same about me. When we get to heaven, I look forward to arguing about all these secondary topics for all eternity. Stay blessed. Well, there won't be any arguments in heaven. You already know that. But again, why the change? Why the shift? Why the pivot? That, that, that is what I'm always concerned with because, again, I don't care for echo chamber conversations. There's no, I mean, they, they, it has its place, but if I'm only going to invite people on my channel who always agree with me, then when does the iron sharpening iron take place? When, when do we apply Proverbs 27, 17? When, when, does, when does as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another? When does that take place? If we if we refuse to go across the aisle and address and, and to respond and to question and to have dialogue with each other that we may disagree with. But later that later this later today, uh, you and I had an Instagram conversation. And you all can go to his uh, Instagram page on Amazing Church NYC. I'll go ahead and, and, and share the screen here. Um, he's basically premiering his, uh, his movie. And the question that I had asked him was regarding, you know, Christians being demon possessed. He said, that's not what he holds to. He says that that is heresy. And anyone that holds to that is, uh, is a heretic and they need to repent or they're going to go to hell. Okay. But again, we just established the point that the definition of demonized means to be possessed or as if by a demon. So, Demon possession, and I'll just put it up here on the screen. What is demon possession? Let's see if it's the same thing. Demon possession definition. Demon possession occurs when one or more evil spirits enter into a living entity. Example, human and control in varying degrees their mental and physical faculties to such a degree that the individuals are controlled, is controlled, are controlled uh, in whole or in part by the demon. So what really is the difference? Answer, there is no difference. And you said in, in the, in the uh, comments on IG that maybe, you know, we, we have a difference of definition. No, definitions matter. I mean, the definition is the definition. And I had encouraged you to amend yours because your understanding of demonization, that's foreign. 
to what the word actually means. A Christian cannot be demon possessed and God has not commanded Christians in the New Testament to cast out devils. He hasn't. Show me in scripture where he has commanded the church to cast out devils after Acts. And please don't use Acts because Acts is not the standard by which we derive doctrine. We can glean from it, but it is a descriptive historical book. But anyway, you have responded to my comment and you all can look at it. You said, I have publicly said during my during the pandemic on my live videos that I have recanted all of my previous statements to open dialogues as I am personally tired and don't have the energy anymore. Dialogue drains me. So since I said it publicly, I recanted publicly. Corey will probably be my last open convo until Christ comes. I might be open to a convo with you years from now. You seem like a cool brother, but don't hold me to that. You have my permission to say I reneged as I already publicly did, publicly did that, but it makes great content for your channel. See, again, so remember the, remember the, 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 the statement that you made, um, Alex, it's not about, it's not about building up my channel. I, I, I want my channel to be built up because of the truth that I'm presenting because it's of its substance, not because of sensationalization and because I'm just trying to get likes and follows. That has never been my heart, never been my intention. You said, on my end, I'll continue to preach the gospel and help the captives be set free. I'm logging off my brother in Christ. I think I gave you enough content for your Pagani folder this morning. So, again, you know, you, you make the comments, you make the statements, and, you know, I, I've already extended the opportunity for us to converse. But you seem not to want to do that. And that, and that seems to be the attitude and mentality of a lot of you guys who hold to this type of teaching, this type of aberrant view of the of the of the Holy Spirit. But you cannot say for the record, Alex, you cannot say you cannot fix your mouth going forward that people do not want to have a conversation with you because this people does. I've reached out to you, I've reached out to others. So what is what is, what is there? I mean, what else are we to conclude? I mean, if you're going to continue to keep saying the things that you say, and then now you're calling yourself an apostle, which makes me also ask you this other question. Where do we find apostles, the continuation of apostles after the first century, after the original, with Paul also being the exception? And I'm talking about the ones who have seen our risen Lord. You know, the Acts chapter 1 verse 19 and 22 and following the criteria for an apostle. The Bible says that they must have seen the risen Lord after his crucifixion. He, he, they must have seen they must have been with him and witnessed his resurrection. And Paul is an exception because Christ appeared to him personally. We find that in Acts. And we also find that in Galatians. So again, where's the biblical precedent for you to claim to be an apostle. The criteria and the qualifications cannot be changed if God himself has required it and stipulated it. No different than for pastors. Pastors are for men. They're not for women. Doesn't matter what the society says, what does the word of God say? So again, I'm extending this opportunity to you. I know you said you're not going to take it, but I want to make this public. I'm extending an opportunity. I'm extending the olive branch to Alexander Pagani and to anyone else who believes that Christians can be demonized, a.k.a. demon possessed, Alex, because that's exactly what it means. Show me how I'm mistaking your words and misrepresenting your words, and then I'll publicly recant and repent. But I'm just stating your mate, just making your statement that you said. And again, you can go to the Instagram uh, page. And you can see where he has made the uh, the comment, and 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 tried to um, clarify his his uh, his position. Because again, the last thing I want to do is change a person's uh, words around and flip people's words around. He makes this last comment right here, here on the right. You see it? What I did was I asked him a question. I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that the contention of debate you and Corey Minor had when he invited you on his channel, when you affirmed that Christians can be demon-possessed? 
and Corey disagreed with you, you said, no, I did not. Please go back and watch the interview closely and you will see that I vehemently opposed that idea and stated that Christian can be demonized in an area not submitted to the Holy Spirit by willful sin, according to Ephesians 4.27. Neither get place to the devil. And I, and, I, and, I, and I said to you, neither get place to the devil does not equate, nor does it conflate, nor does it imply demon possession or demonization. But you said, again, anyone teaching a Christian can be possessed by the devil is a false teacher, heretic, or cursed and on their way to hell. I said, Corey, I then you said, Corey did not disagree with me concerning the above mentioned as my interview with him was not a debate for him to disagree on anything theological. I agreed to get on his podcast to discuss deliverance methods only. Any other discussion would be fruitless as I'm never going to change my mind on deliverance. I even gave Corey permission to slaughter my videos and hold me accountable that I wouldn't respond, uh, no, no do any anti Corey videos. I kept my word on that. You said, stay blessed. Again, you can archive this convo, and I sincerely hope you do a video on it and let it be known that I said a Christian cannot be demon-possessed. Stay blessed and may God expand your channel. But again, I said, please define a Christian being demonized. Giving place to the devil isn't being demonized. Your definition is not accurate. You may want to rephrase and or amend your position. And he said, maybe the terms need to be defined a little better as, as all schools of thought can define their worldviews better. But at the moment, all I care about is my name being taken off that Christian can be demon possessed list. All I'm asking is that church folks be fair, not saying that you're not, in their assessment of us. Hold us accountable to the ministry of deliverance itself, not in something we're not saying. So, ladies and gentlemen, I read that thread pretty much in its entirety and in this context. You tell me. Am I mistaking uh, Alexander Pagani's words in his understanding and definition of demonization and demon possession? Let me know what you think in the comments. Is demonization and demon possession the same thing? Or does Alex Pagani have a point that demonization and demon possession are not the same things and I need to retract my statement to him and offer a clear apology to him for misrepresenting him? But if it is the same, then do you believe and do you think that Alex Pagani definitely needs to come back and make his statement clear regarding those definitions, that they're both one and the same, that they're not separate things in and of itself? So, again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I do appreciate that. Um, again, if you like this video, please share it. Please subscribe to the channel Love, Life, and Marriage with the Woods. Uh, our marriage channel, please support that channel as well. Again, if you'd like to support the ministry, you can do so by the donation link information below at the bottom of this video. If you'd like to become a uh, life uh, builder, you can do that as well. Uh, and you can support the ministry and the donation links are below at the bottom of this uh, channel. I, I said body lifer, <laughs> body lifer. Yeah, be a body lifer. So not a body builder, but you can do that too as well. It builds your body. But anyway, that's my time. I thank you all so much for yours. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm trying to see something. And oh, by the way, Alex, remember. That's you on tape. <laughs>